I'm Dr. Hervasio Lamas. Um, I am Chairman of Medicine and Chief of the Columbia University Division of Cardiology in Mount Sinai Medical Center in, fortunately, Miami Beach. I started studying chelation, and just to step back a little bit, um, a chelating agent is a chemical that has a pocket, and that pocket is electrically charged. So EDTA, which is the uh, chelating agent we use, has the ability to chelate or capture toxic metals like lead and cadmium, which are, in fact, uh, cardiotoxic. They uh, disturb the function of the arter of arteries, endothelium, and heart by replacing other plus two um, ions that are actually essential. So lead typically will replace calcium. You know that something bad has got to happen if that occurs. Um, cadmium will replace zinc. You know something bad is going to happen when you're using cadmium instead of zinc, which is the center of so many metalloenzymes. And uh, epidemiologic studies have shown over and over and over and over again that these uh, two metals caused or are causative in um, cardiovascular disease, in particular, heart attacks, stroke, hypertension, and overall mortality. I became interested in chelation way back um, in 2000 and in about 2000 because it was being used by alternative medicine doctors for odd reasons, a uh, hodgepodge of reasons. And I was able to get a grant from the National Institutes of Health to study chelation with EDTA in patients with cardiovascular disease. We did that study just about, it took 10 years. 2003, 2012, we bl unblinded it and find that much to everyone's shock, it actually reduced cardiovascular events in patients who had a prior heart attack. The hazard ratio was 0.82, and that's an 18% relative reduction in risk. And in diabetic patients, in, the, in patients with diabetes, the reduction was huge. Hazard ratio 0.59, or 41% relative reduction in risk. At that point, we could, took a step back and said, wait a minute, there could be something really important here. And we moved on and were able to secure another 30 odd million dollar grant to do TAC-2, which I will be presenting here. TAC-2 went from 2016 to 2023. And at the end of it all, we randomized a thousand patients to receive 40 infusions. It's an IV drug. It's not absorbed in the GI tract. To uh, randomize a thousand patients to receive EDTA, infusions of EDTA, or infusions of a placebo. The average uh, patient had a, a, was about 67 years old. They were all diabetics, um, and so on. And the bottom line is that there was no beneficial effect that we could demonstrate. The curves trended towards um, a positive effect, but the trend was not significant. I mean, it, this is a solidly negative trial. And then, of course, you know, when you get what you expect, it's often less interesting than when you get what you don't expect. So what happened? We studied what EDTA was doing. Patients who receive EDTA in TAC-2 ended up with a lead level at the end of the infusion regimen that was less than 60% of what they started with. So the stuff works. That's one. Then we then looked at what, what is it that happened? Because the studies were a little over a decade apart. In that decade in the US and Canada where we did the study, the lead levels went from 17 to 10, a 40 odd percent 
reduction. And the patients that we enrolled in our study had a lead level of nine. That was not part of the entry criteria because in the first study, we had never looked at it. So now our hypothesis is, look, if you're starting out with a low lead level, something that looks like a goal rather than a problem, and I can take your lead level from nine to three, you're not gonna be able to claim a huge difference. So how does that fit to the clinician? Well, if you're a clinician in the US, in Canada, probably Western Europe, where lead levels are really quite low, um, you probably should not be using, let me modify that, you should not be using chelation to prevent recurrent heart attacks and cardiovascular disease in patients who have diabetes and established heart disease. That's one. Second, that's only a small part of the world. The majority of the world is where we were in the United States in the 90s. And whether or not a safe way of reducing lead in those patients should be tested is something which is probably for the next guy who has less gray hair than I do.